Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 1st September 2018. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or how it may help in your trading, you can visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we look at oil and gold, the commodities that tend to impact related stocks. We'll analyze them using technical charts. When taking swing trades, we like to align them with the market's direction. We'll study the market strength using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical charts of the broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market strength, we like to align them with industry strength. We will study that using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may go through some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide. Of the presentation, let's move to live system. We begin our commodity study using the oil ETF US Oil USO. We are looking at it using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together, we call this at a glance template because it can help decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry at the right edge in only a few seconds. Last week in the weekly chart, oil reversed from downtrend, the weekly candle color turned bullish cyan and the shape was also bullish. This week it went up further. In the daily chart, it came to the lower boundary and made a sharp reversal from there. There was no pullback in the middle. Therefore, USO did not give us any low risk long entry opportunity. It is very close to the upper boundary lines. We are not going to try any long trade in oil right now. Gold ETF GLD. Last week, gold also went up. The candle shape was bullish, though the color was yellow, neutral. This week, it tried to go up in the beginning, but closed lower. The weekly candle color is remaining neutral. In the daily chart, from below the lower boundary lines, it recovered to the value area, pulled back little bit. It is remaining near the value area now. If it goes up next week, breaks above the downtrend line, the memory resistance line, gives us a cyan color candle in the daily chart, 
then it may give us a low risk buy opportunity. Right now there is no swing trade opportunity in gold. From commodities analysis we move on to market breadth analysis. We are looking at NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts. Because this study is using broad indices and weekly interval, it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Earlier, we had observed a bearish divergence between NASDAQ index and new high low. In the last market roundup, I mentioned that the divergence seems to be going away and it has ended this week. This week NASDAQ made another new all-time high. New high low declined but it is remaining significantly above zero line. Advanced decline and up down volume also declined but both are remaining above zero lines. NYSE is not as strong as NASDAQ. It is significantly below the previous all time high. This week, first it tried to go up but closed lower with a bearish shaped candle. The candle color is still bullish. All the NYSE internals also declined and up down volume closed below zero. In terms of internals also NASDAQ is stronger than NYSE. Over longer term the memory support lines are holding quite well. Both NASDAQ and NYSE will continue to be in uptrend until this support memory lines are broken. For this specific week, the internals are mixed. All of them decline, though five of them close well above zero. In the last market roundup, I mentioned that there were some contradictions between broad index move and the ETFs move. That was some reason for caution. This week that contradiction has gone away. So the bearish divergence of NASDAQ and NASDAQ new high low is not there anymore. The contradiction between composite indices and market ETFs is not there anymore. So we have to say that the market continues to be bullish and became more bullish this week. Let us now move to the broad market ETFs to see how they move this week. S&P 500 ETF SPY Last week it made a new all-time high and this week it made yet another new all-time high. Last Friday price was already close to the upper boundary lines and this week it closed at the upper boundary lines. It is clearly in uptrend. However, to extend it for us to take any long trend. NASDAQ 100 ETF QQQ. Last week it closed just below the watermark resistance line in the weekly chart. This week it opened above the watermark resistance line and continued to go up. Made a new all time high this week. In the daily chart, we can see the same pattern. It opened on Monday above the watermark resistance level and continued to go up throughout the week. Prices above the upper boundary lines to extend it to take any swing long trade. Dia 
from the relative performance we can see that it is underperforming the market underperforming s p 500 this week it tried to go up closed higher on a closing basis from previous week however the weekly candle shape is bearish color is still bullish in the daily chart on monday it opened above the watermark resistance line went above the upper bounded lines and then pulled back it is in uptrend but too close to the upper boundary lines to take any long trend Russell 2000 ETF IWM last week it made a new all time high this week it made another new all time high in the daily chart it is close to the upper boundary lines to extend it to take any long trade right now we see that three of the four market ETFs made new all time highs this week that shows the strength of the market the strength that was seen in the market indices and their internals is reflected in the market ETFs as well there is no contradiction between the two like was true one week ago let us see if this strength is reflected at the sector level as well four week sector performance every week we study the 11 sectors across four review periods the red bar represents performance of this week green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar together they give us four weeks or about one month of performance this week six sectors went up and five went down showing a neutral picture of the market at the sector level so though the broad indices and the market ETFs are very bullish that bullishness is not reflected at the sector level energy declined this week two weeks ago energy was the worst performer one week ago energy was the best performer looking at that in the last market roundup i had mentioned that it may continue to flip flop and suggested caution energy sector indeed pulled back and closed down this week not by very large percentage we can see that from the length of the red bar but it did reverse from being the best performer to one that actually declined in spite of the market being very bullish this week the flip-flop in energy and some other sectors that we studied last week is continuing if we see the red bars we can see that only two really went up this week healthcare and information technology healthcare is by far the best performer at the sector level it went up by more than 4.6 percentage that is a very big gain for one week we track total 10 healthcare industries from the QH sector scorecard and heat map industry scorecard and heat map we can see that out of those 10 healthcare industries 7 are among the top 20 percent of all industries this way these are the industries where you would avoid short and look for buy opportunities that is how we try to align the force of the sector and the industry with our swing trades market is very bullish sectors are mixed however these are very broad levels when we drill down to the industry level and further to the stocks fundamentals and 
technicals, we can always find both long as well as short opportunities. That is why I always suggest starting with the industry level to look for potential trades, not market or sector level. Though we study those to have an idea of what is going on at a higher level, actual trade opportunities are best found starting from the industry level. Let's continue with industry performance analysis now. We saw that healthcare sector is the best performing sector by far and that strength is reflected in the best performing industries. Six of the ten best performers are in healthcare sector. These are biotech, healthcare equipment, pharmaceuticals, healthcare supplies, healthcare facilities and healthcare technology. From the five days and ten days course, we can see that several of these industries are strong from one week ago itself. And some have gained strength considerably, like human resource and employment services, pharmaceuticals, etc. The industries that were strong from one week ago we could start to look for long opportunities in them from the previous week itself. And the ones that gained this week, like healthcare facilities, we could start to look for potential longs in them in this week. I identified one such buy opportunity, CYH, in healthcare facilities. It is optimally valued, showing accelerating earnings growth in recent quarters and technically it broke out of memory resistance on Friday and gave a go with flow trend following buy opportunity. I shared this analysis in Traders Forum on Friday. Let us look at QH, look at the sectors and then Look at the best performing industries, look at healthcare facilities and then drill down to CYH to identify the potential buy opportunity that came on Friday. From QH sector scorecard and heat map, we can see that the best performing sectors of the week are healthcare, infotech and real estate. And the worst performers are telecom, energy, and utilities. Healthcare is now strong for many review periods. Real estate is one sector that is displaying probably the most prominent flip flop. From magenta, it turned cyan to Magenta again to cyan to magenta to cyan to magenta to cyan again. It is very indecisive going up for a period and then reversing for a period. Real estate is probably not the best sector right now to look for swing trades. In the industry tab, the best performing industries for this week are shown with cyan color over 5 days column. Healthcare facilities is one of the best performers this week. It was strong for a long time, turned little bit magenta over one month period, then turned cyan again over 10 days, gained score further over 5 days period. Let us look at the forum post that I shared on CYH from this industry. Healthcare facilities stock breaking out. This is the post I submitted on Friday during market hours. 
this is how the chart looked at that time. After some decline, it was starting to go up. The up move started from the earnings week. The weekly candle colors were cyan for a number of weeks. This week, it closed with a bullish shape as well as bullish color candle in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, during earnings, it went up, pulled back little bit and started to go up again. It consolidated for a few days and on Friday, it broke out of the narrow range and it was going above the memory resistance line when I shared this post. We always look at a stock's industry as well as fundamental strength before deciding to buy a stock. CYH was breaking out and that prompted me to analyze its industry and fundamentals as well. As we saw just now, it was true on Friday also. Healthcare facilities, CYH industry, was strong. The colors were in cyan when I shared the post. I had drilled down to do a fundamental and peer analysis, and from the color code, you can instantly recognize that in terms of valuation, the color was cyan, that is, it was optimally value. If you look at the recent quarterly earnings, you can see it is going up from negative 154 percentage to 62 percentage to 96 percentage. That is significant acceleration is taking place in quarterly earnings. CYH ended Friday with a cyan color candle in the daily and also cyan color candle in the weekly that gave us a possible go with flow trend following long trade setup with low risk. Some Q traders might have taken the trade near Friday's market close. If you didn't do that, you might keep an eye on CYH next week looking for a low risk entry opportunity. From best performing industries, we now move to the worst performing industries. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 day scores. You can see some industries like specialized finance, specialized consumer services were weak from previous week itself. Whereas some like computer and electronics retail and marine industries, they were relatively stronger last week and declined heavily this week. We saw that the market was very strong this week. Both Nasdaq and NYSE were strong. Three ETFs made new all-time highs. Still, as I mentioned, drilling down from industry level and looking for stocks that are technically giving us a short opportunity and fundamentals are weak, industry is weak. We may always look for short trades as well. Alternative carriers is one of the worst performing industries this week and Intel Sat is overvalued. It is also having negative EPS growth in recent quarters. This is opposite to CYH that I discussed just now. CYH was in a strong industry, optimally valuation stock, and EPS growth is accelerating. Intelsat is totally opposite. It is in one of the worst performing industries, overvalued, and also having negative EPS growth. So in CYH, you would look for long opportunities and in 
Intel set I, we would look for short opportunities. I shared an analysis on this stock in our traders forum when it was breaking below memory support recently. Let us look at the worst performing industries in QA, locate alternative carriers, and then look at the forum post on Intelsat. In Q industry scorecard and heat map, the worst performing industries of the week are displayed in magenta color over five days period. Alternative carriers is an industry that was much stronger earlier, cyan color, and it is gradually changing color from cyan to magenta. Over 10 days, it already turned magenta, and this week, it is remaining magenta, holding on to the weakness, score declined a little bit more this week. If we can identify a stock in this industry that is toppling over, then we may be able to short it at the very top. And Intel said, seemed like such an opportunity. Let's look at the forum post. Time to short I. I is Intel said. I shared this in the forum five days ago. This is how the chart looked at that time. In the weekly chart, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. Next week, it tried to go up but closed with an upper tail. And in the last week, at the right edge of the chart, it was starting to go down again. The candle color turned magenta at that time bearish. In the daily chart, it tried to go above the quarterly pivot level, came down, retested that area and at the right edge when I shared the post, it opened below the memory support line and was continuing to go down. Traffic light candle color flipped from green to red without going through the neutral yellow color. We could keep an eye on the stock right from the morning when it opened below the memory support line and probably short it somewhere in the middle of the candle using fine tune 5 minute or 10 minute chart. That was the technical view of the stock when I shared it. I also did a fundamental and industry analysis. Let's have a look at that. You can see that at that time, though the previous periods were very cyan, 10 days period was not fully magenta, it was in between magenta and cyan. And at that time, the five days period had turned magenta. So it was starting to turn bearish and I could locate the toppling over, possible toppling over of the stock just as the industry was also starting to weaken. You remember just now we saw from live QA that now both 10 days and 5 days are in deep magenta color. The scores have weakened further but we didn't have to wait for that looking at the declining strength from the heat map of the scores and also looking at the pace 5 days column that was showing heavy deceleration, we could look for shots ahead of others. What about the fundamentals? I shared that also in the post. I, Intel said, was having 
very poor valuation overvalued stock shown by magenta color and from the EPS columns you can see that all the recent quarters are having deep red negative earnings growth even the last one year or last three years all are having negative earnings growth so this was a stock that was fundamentally weak it went up as the industry also went up but then when the industry was starting to decelerate being fundamentally very weak this would be one of the first to drop probably that was my thought when i shared this idea let's look at intel set today i had shared intel set based on this day's candle when i shared it the candle color was still red during the day it fell further the color turned magenta and from there it is steadily declining and this decline happened when the market was going up that is why i mentioned that even if the market is bullish looking at industry weakness fundamental weakness and chart weakness we can always look at short opportunities as well other than the best performing and worst performing industries every week we study the accelerating and decelerating industries because they tend to be best or worst performers in subsequent weeks we just saw a live example of that we could identify a short opportunity in intel sat when its industry was decelerating that was more than one week ago and this week Intelsat's industry turned out to be one of the worst performers. So in that example also, a decelerating industry turned out to be the worst performer. That is why we study the accelerating and decelerating industries that allows us to take a trade sometimes well ahead of others. four of the accelerating industries are in real estate however we saw from the sector heat map that real estate is displaying most flip flop from up to down to up between different review periods it may be safer to stay away from these sectors the four rates that are among the best performers this week are industrial rates office rates specialized rates and healthcare rates but it would be safe to stay away from rates right now momentarily we will go back to qh look at the flip flop at sector level for real estate and drill down into industries real estate industries to see that the flip flop is very visible at the industry level as well airlines is the most accelerating industries this week interestingly there are two airline stocks both are brazilian stocks they are traded in the usa also but both are brazilian airlines g o l and a z u l they declined a lot and now both are showing signs of possible reversal they are either optimally valued one of them is optimally valued and the other is showing improving eps growth in recent quarters so fundamentally both have reasons to look for buy opportunities technically it seems to be creating a low point and starting to go up you may keep an eye on these two stocks to see if they give proper buy setups next week let's look at the flip flop of the real estate sector and its industries from qh and then look at airlines industry and drill down to gol and azul the sector heat map is showing clear flip flop 
between different review periods color changing from magenta to cyan to magenta to cyan to magenta etc in real estate sector let us drill down to real estate industries and now you can see for most of the real estate industries also there is very prominent flip flop probably apart from diversified real estate activities all the other real estate industries are shifting from magenta to cyan to magenta to cyan to magenta to cyan with so much flip flop it may be safer to stay away from taking directional swing trades in these industries when we look for the accelerating industries we can sort the industries over pace column the most accelerating industries for the week are shown in cyan color over pace five days column airlines is the most accelerating industry it is also a possible turn around candidate meaning that it was magenta earlier very weak gain strength in the middle weakened little bit and now gain strength again with acceleration most acceleration of this week that is shown as cyan color over base five days color let's drill down into this industry we have these two stocks a z u l and g o l both are brazilian airlines g o l is optimally valued cyan color in valuation column and a z u l is showing accelerating earnings growth in last two quarters it was 185% growth one quarter ago and last quarter it was 737% earnings growth those were significant growths so both have fundamental reasons to look for buy opportunities the short squeeze columns are cyan for both of these stocks both of them are very close to their 52 week lows they are at a very low level they may be considered opportunities for longer term investment you may study the stocks a bit more to decide if they are suitable long term investments and they may also be taken as swing long trade opportunities as a ul went up by 4.5% and gol went up by 7.8% this week we can see that from the percentage 5 days call let us look at the q charts of these two stocks to see how they are starting to go up from a very low price point azul it had a very sharp drop in the weekly chart it had exhaustion at this price level price tried to go up retested that area and this week recovered somewhat ended with a bullish shape as well as bullish color cyan color candle in the weekly chart in the daily chart it displayed a bullish headwind at this point from where price recovered came to the declining yellow direction line pulled back retested the same low and this week it went up friday's candle color turned green bullish there are multiple signs of a possible low formation that is the double bottom in daily chart the bullish headwind signal at the double bottom level the weekly candle color turning cyan at the double bottom in weekly as well and the daily candle color turning green and displaying a bull release signal there are multiple memory resistance lines q traders may not take a long trade right now but keep an eye on the stock 
if it is able to break above the memory resistance lines and gives low risk buy opportunity that may be a good point to try to take a swing trade entry or maybe even a long term investment entry GOL the other Brazilian airline also dropped sharply recovered just like AZUL retested the previous low and weekly and went up this way the weekly displayed a bullish headwind signal there is a memory resistance in the weekly chart that is nearby in the daily also GOL displayed the bullish headwind from their price went up retested the bottom created by the bullish headwind signal went up this way the daily candle color turned green that is bullish again like AZUL it has a memory resistance line in the daily chart there are multiple reversal signals you may keep an eye to see if the memory resistance is broken and if it gives a low risk entry opportunity these are brazilian airlines they may not be necessarily correlated with the us airlines they may give buy opportunities even if some of the us airlines are either declining or are moving sideways Lastly, we study the decelerating industries. We are looking at these industries 5 days and 10 days scores. You can see that for all of these industries, 5 days scores are significantly lower than 10 days scores. In the home entertainment software industry, EA dropped by 12% this week looking back you will see how the bearish headwinds in both daily as well as weekly and then the go with flow short signal that came in daily in late july helped you to stay out of the stock and you could even take low risk short trades that turned out to be very profitable this week it capped down after a disappointing news we'll momentarily look at the chart computer and electronics retail is another decelerating industries BBY dropped heavily after earnings and it hit the support memory in daily we have a trade setup bounce trade setup that relies on such exhausting moves if a stock drops suddenly it may be associated with some negative news in this case earnings and the drop stopped right at the memory support in daily and then it started to go up it had heavy activity during the down move so all the requirements of bounce long trade setup were met you could take a bounce long entry in BBY this week Wednesday and since then it has recovered enough to give a profitable swing trade let us look at EA and see how the headwind signals and the go with flow short setup would alert us to stay out of the stock then look at QH identify computer and electronics retail as one of the decelerating industries and see how BBY gave a bounce long trade setup this also shows that a decelerating industry stock doesn't always have to give us short setup in this case the deceleration happened probably because BBY dropped heavily but it came right at support memory support and we could use the reversal setup sharp reversal setup bound setup to take a long trade at a very low price level 
that is how we are always combining the industry analysis with the technical analysis to take the trades that are high probability and also low risk at the same time. Let's look at EA charts first. In the daily chart, when price was at a very high level, EA displayed a bearish headwind in the daily chart. So those who took a long trade in EA, for example, using this hand color candle, that would be a possible go with flow trend following long trade setup. The entry could be made somewhere in the middle of the candle using real time chart. Those long position holders would be careful when the bearish headwind came. They would probably use Q protection signal to apply trailing stop. The trailing stop was actually just below the bearish headwind candle. And the long position holders will get stopped out on the remaining position giving them a very profitable trend. After that price tried to go up, retested the high created by the bearish headwind signal, those are the times we start looking for short opportunities. I have mentioned many times, if a bearish headwind is able to push price down, when price goes back to the same level, some selling may still be left. Others may be looking for buy opportunities breakout opportunities. Q traders are not that much fond of breakout opportunities unless they give low risk entries. Instead of looking for breakouts, Q traders would look for short opportunities at this bearish headwind level. That came on this magenta color candle that was a go with flow short trade setup. You can see that weekly also displayed a bearish headwind. Where was that in the daily chart? Let's align the candles. This is the daily candle, very bearish shape candle, when we had the bearish headwind in the weekly chart. That was at the very top of ES move. That was followed by the magenta color candle in the daily. That was an easy decision to take a short trade. Earnings was nearby, so the short might be taken with options verticals, short call verticals instead of using stocks to short the move. That would be very profitable. When it was forming a base, I observed that EA was having optimal valuation. Last week, price tried to go below the weekly memory support line and closed higher. Therefore, I was looking for a long opportunity, relying on the support of the weekly memory and the base it was forming in the daily chart and fundamentally it was optimally valued. If anyone took the trade, the stop would be just below this base, maybe just below the white direction line. On Thursday, there was a news that EA was going to delay the release of one of its games and it also reduced its outlook for 2019. Those led to this gap down move and from there price continued to move down both on Thursday and Friday. This shows two things. One is we must always put a stop because in spite of technical support in weekly or the optimal valuation that the stock was having, a negative major news can still move a stock down. So we must always use stops or use put options to protect our long positions. And the second thing to note that if we have a gap down open, 
the stop will not be of full use it will be of some use not full use instead of exiting a long trade at our desired stop level the stock will exit at a lower level and from there it continued to move down an alert trader who had a long position would probably exit the long right at the open if the stop order was there it would get executed anyway and then he could notice that there was a probably a gap short trade opportunity and he could make significant profit from that day trade he might have even turned the day trade into a two day trade looking at the close on thursday at the very low price level for a swing trader one would not initiate a trade on thursday or friday because price was already significantly down the stop would be far away now we see that it has gone below the deep watermark support level it had heavy activity for two successive days there is no short opportunity instead if price turns back next week goes above this watermark support level that may give us bounce long trade opportunity the stock is continuing to be optimally valued it is possible that this sharp down move was overreaction if it goes up above the watermark support level it may give us a low risk bounce long opportunity let's look at the decelerating industries from key wedge this week's decelerating industries are shown in magenta color score over base 5 days column computer and electronics retail this is an industry that was stronger earlier the scores were in cyan color and it turned magenta this week so it is very weak industry this week and the weakness came with heavy deceleration that is shown in the base column let's drill down bby best buy is a stock that is of medium valuation yellow color in the valuation column and it is having increasing earnings growth in recent quarters increasing from 24% to 43% to 31% so there are reasons in terms of fundamentals that would allow us to look for buy opportunity let's look at the technical charts bby had earnings this week one week ago it broke above the watermark resistance level and this week it reversed tried to go down have closed with a mixed shape candle solid body as well as long lower tail in the daily chart we can see that at earnings it dropped heavily however on that day price actually closed above the memory support line and next day this wednesday it again had heavy activity heavy activity on an up day close was above previous day's close so it was exhausted found support and went up on wednesday that met all the requirements of a bounce long trade setup if somebody was taking the trade one would not put stop below this low that would be far away swing traders might have used the low of this candle wednesday candle to put stop on thursday and friday the stock went up partial profit could be booked on friday as the week ended with a very bullish shape candle one might consider holding partial position trying to let profit run but partial position could be booked 
those were the regular topics let me summarize then i would like to review few more trade ideas that were shared in the traders forum these are akrx f e y e fire eye c o t y m o and u t x but let me summarize before reviewing these ideas from the market breadth we saw that the divergence between nasdaq index and nasdaq high low that has gone away now nasdaq made a new all time high its internals are pretty bullish nyse didn't make a new all time high however the internals are more bullish than bearish the etfs were very strong this week three of the four etfs made new all time highs at the sector level that strength is not visible at the sector level it is balanced at the industry level we can always look for trade opportunities whether the market is strong or not strong aligning the industry strength or weakness with technical strength and weakness and fundamental strength and weakness we could find trades in this week like that 360 degree trades as we call them and we also identified few opportunities that may present themselves as low risk buy opportunities or short opportunities next week let me review some of the trade ideas i had shared earlier they are all from our traders forum i will not go through the forum post but let me use the technical charts to see how they are doing now we start with akrx i had shared the short idea on this day the magenta color candle at that time it came to the memory resistance both in weekly and daily and dropped from there gave us a magenta color candle from there price had dropped a lot and we had booked at least partial profit it has recovered somewhat will it go up or down now we don't know if it goes down it will probably give us another short opportunity it will be below the lower boundary lines if it goes down from here still looking at the weakness of the stock one might consider taking a short again if it gives us a rule following go with flow short trade setup if it continues to move back up from here one might exit the remaining position fire i i had shared a bullish idea on this stock on this daily candle from there price went up enough to give us more profit than the risk taken in the trade partial profit would be booked at that time itself as the weekly candle was bullish there would not be any reason to exit full position it moved sideways for a few days and then on friday it went up again broke above this memory resistance lines it looks from the weekly bullish shape candle bullish color candle and the break out from the memory resistance in daily chart it seems that fire eye will go up further that is why we prefer not to exit full position when the initial profit target is met if the industry technical fundamental all are aligned we prefer to hold on to partial position trying to let profit run as we are trying in this case q traders should continue to hold partial position with trailing stop and the trailing stop would probably be somewhere around this level so even if that is hit we will have a profit on the remaining position as well cotty 
I shared my bullish view on this stock when in weekly we had two successive weeks with long lower tails. They were also associated with earnings. I shared the bullish idea at that time. A long taken at that time would have the declining yellow direction line as initial target that was hit on this day. Again, there would not be any reason to exit full position, partial position could be held. After that, it pulled back little bit. Friday ended with a mixed shape candle. Solid body but long lower tail. If it goes up from here, then it may give us another go with flow long trade opportunity. If the daily candle color turns cyan next week, we already have a cyan color in the weekly chart, we'll have a trend following long trade opportunity. If that happens, it may break the two memory resistance line and go up further. That will be another case where we'll be able to try to let profit run. MO, the tobacco stock. In this case, I shared a bearish trade setup based on this bearish headwind signal and from there price continued to go down. The initial profit target would be the yellow direction line and the weekly candle was very bearish so we would not have any reason to book full position profit. Partial position could be held. Since then, price moved sideways, though the market went up significantly. So it is bearish relative to the market and we will see if it continues to fall down next week. If it does so, we'll be able to let profit run. We'll of course use trailing stop to make sure that the entire trade is risk free from the point we booked our initial profit. The last stock that I wanted to review is UTX. It was moving in a narrow range bound by this memory resistance line. Based on that, I had shared the possible short idea in the forum on this candle when it broke below the memory support line. Since then, it dropped for two days Though the market went up sharply, that is reflected in the relative performance tilting down. On Friday, it hit both the yellow direction line as well as the memory support line. That would be initial profit target. Price is also close to the weekly memory support line. Looking at all those support lines, at least partial position would be booked. One might close full position in this case looking at so many support lines or one might try to let profit run using trailing stop. This is how we can see that we had short trade setups in AKRX, MO and UTX. Long trade setups in FireEye and Koti. In all of them we could book partial profit quickly in three to four days and then we were able to try to let profit run so far they are working out pretty well it is risky to take too many long trades because the market is already at very top one strategy could be to balance the longs with shorts as we are trying to do now as you can see from the forum post that is how using Q360 degrees analysis, we are always able to find both long and short trades. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.